2.4 is all about related rates, and related rates is the application of 2.3 implicit differentiation. Because when we're talking about something that has multiple pieces, multiple components, and we're differentiating that with respect to, say, time, there's, there's multiple things to, to think about. So our goal with related rates and how we want to think about them is to find the rate of change with respect to time of one quantity by using other related quantities. So for example, we could talk about the rate of change of the volume of a sphere with respect to time that would also just depend on the rate of change of the radius during that time. So looking at the formula, if I was to differentiate this with respect to time, I would end up with dv dt, and I would also end up with dr dt. And what that means is the rate of change of the volume is depending on the rate of change of the radius. And that should make sense. Everything that comes together to create the volume, how each component of that is changing, is going to change the rate of change of the volume. So I first just want to talk about a few tips for working through these related rate types of problems. I will also tell you, similar to when I teach factoring, the more you practice these types of problems, the more natural they become in solving. And one of my favorite things about these types of problems is that they are like a giant puzzle and you have to manipulate the pieces to, to do what you need them to do and to tie them together. So first tip, draw a picture. Sometimes you're gonna have a picture given to you, but draw a picture and choose variables for the unknowns. Choose variables that make sense in the context of the problem. Second, write what is given and what is trying to be found. I usually have a little spot off to the right or off to the left where I'm just noting to myself, here's my picture and here's everything I know that's true all the time and everything that I know is true in the instant that we're talking about this particular problem. The third thing is to write an equation relating the variables. Oftentimes that's going to be formula, volume, surface area, area of a triangle, area of a rectangle, Pythagorean theorem. All of those go-to formulas that you have been learning your entire lives in math are going to come into play into this unit. Notice that if a quantity is changing, it must be related to a variable. If a quantity is constant, then it must be related to a number, and you get to plug that number in. So if you are told that a, tall, a house is this tall, you might be able to use the, that height as a number throughout the entire problem. As opposed to if the height is changing over time, that variable has to be represented just in that way, as a variable. Then also, while you're writing these equations, look for secondary relationships between the quantities to reduce the number of variables. Ideally, we will have the fewest number of variables as possible in our final equation that we're going to set up and solve. Then you're going to implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation that you created with respect to t, t for time. Then you're going to substitute in the things that you know that are true in that instant that is being referenced in the problem to solve for whatever it is that you need to solve for. So think through those steps, kind of use that as a to-do list as you're going through these problems, and really make sure that you're practicing following those steps. All right, let's start with problem number one. Given a 10 foot ladder is moving down a wall, when the ladder is eight feet from the wall, it is moving at a rate of four feet per second. How fast is the ladder moving down the wall? So the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a picture. So here's my picture, <laughs> not as beautiful as I'd like it to be. The ladder is leaning against the wall, so L for ladder, W for wall, and A for just the third side of the triangle. It is a right triangle, so that's important to note. Another thing, write what is given is trying to be found. Something to note that this ladder is not changing length. It doesn't say that it's a ladder that like has that ability to stretch in length. So we can actually just identify that the ladder is 10 feet long. Then I wanna identify all of the information that I know. So at this moment, we know that A is eight feet says when the ladder is eight feet from the wall. So at this moment that we're speaking of, A is eight feet. It's moving at a rate of four feet per second. So DA DT, the rate at which A is changing is four feet per second. We also know that we want to find DW DT. We're asking, we're being asked how fast is the ladder moving down the wall? So that's the how fast W is changing, DW DT. We can use this given information to actually identify at this instant what W is, so 10, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem, 10 squared plus equals 
10 squared equals 8 squared plus w squared. That's going to give you that w is 6. Now remember, w is only 6 at this moment that we're talking about. All this information that I just identified under the triangle in red is only true at the instant that we are speaking of. I think that's really important to note. Now we want to try and identify a relationship that we can use to tie in dw dt. And yes, we did actually already use this relationship. This relationship is the Pythagorean theorem. So w squared plus a squared equals l squared or 10 squared. We get to use 10 because this is not changing the size of the ladder is not changing. So based on this, now we have created our equations. We have identified our constants and filled them in. We have looked for secondary relationships. Now we're gonna implicitly differentiate this equation. So we're gonna differentiate this with respect to t. So that's going to give us 2w dw dt plus 2a da dt equals 0. Now, at this instant, we know a bunch of information. So what I'm going to do is at this moment, I'm going to fill in all the information that we know from the red portion below our triangle into this equation on the left. So now that I have all of that information filled in, all I need to do now is to isolate dw dt. That was the goal of this problem, was to figure out what dw dt is. So when you solve that, you're going to get negative 16 over 3 feet per second squared. And it's negative because it's moving down the wall. It does make sense that it's negative and it's moving down the wall. When you write this out, if you were to write out the solution to this question in a sentence, you would either need to say that the rate at which the ladder is moving down the wall is negative 16 over 3 feet per second squared, or you could say the rate at which the ladder is moving is 16 over 3 down the wall. So it's important that you include that it's moving down the wall if you're not including the negative portion. Okay, let's look at number two. A cube is expanding somehow. How long will the sides be when the surface area is expanding at the same rate? If we don't consider dimension as the volume, if the rate of change of the legs or side, that should say, is one meter per second. So first I'm gonna draw my picture of my cube, not very gracefully. I'm gonna label the sides X. Since it's a cube, all the sides are the same length. What are we given? We're given that dv dt is equal to the surface area at that moment, which I'm going to call DSA DT. And what are we being asked to find? We're being asked for X at this moment. So now that we've identified that given information, we need to come up with some formulas that we can use on this problem. Something to note is that this problem is talking about both surface area and volume. So we probably want to set up surface area and volume equations for this situation. So we have surface area is 6x squared, volume is x to the third, and then we're going to differentiate both of those equations with respect to t. So the, the rate of change of the surface area, dsa dt, is going to equal 12x dx dt, and the surface area, or the volume, the derivative of the volume is going to be dv dt, is 3x squared dx dt. And at this moment, these two things are the same. Since they're the same at this moment, we can set those two equations equal to each other, that's going to give us 12x dx dt equals 3x squared dx dt. Now here we could either plug in 1 from the original problem, they did give us that piece of information that the rate of change dx dt is equal to 1 at the moment that we're talking about. We could also just divide both sides by it and get rid of it altogether. Either way you're going to come up with the same answer, that's going to give you 12x equals 3x squared. If you move everything to the same side, you're going to get 0 equals 3x times x minus 4. This is going to give you that x equals 0, which doesn't make sense, or x equals 4. So the answer to this question is that at this moment that we are referring to, the side is 4 miles long. It's really easy for these problems to get messy when you're showing work. If it gets messy, you may need to go back and kind of number the order that you did things in or really just try and make sure you're giving yourself enough space to do each of these problems in a way that someone reading your work can follow what you did. Let's go ahead and look at number three. I recommend that you pause number three, read it to yourself, and then draw a picture and see if you can work through it and unpause it afterwards. So I'm drawing my picture. I'm identifying what we want. We want DVDT. I'm identifying what we already know. We know that A is 11, that's always true, and that B is always equal to C. We also know at this instant, B is equal to 
and dBdt is 0.1. So all that information is really going to help me. Now I'm going to write the formula that they gave me in this problem. Obviously, I'm going to be using that, and I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to t. And actually, before I differentiate both sides, I can rewrite this with all the information that I know that's not changing, like that a is 11, and I can substitute c in for b. So that, vol that volume formula is going to become volume is 44 pi over 3 b squared. Now I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to t. Now that I've done that, I can substitute in what I know to be true at this moment. That's going to get me here, and there's no more variables on the right-hand side, so I can just punch these numbers into a calculator to get my answer, which is going to be 28.567 inches squared over seconds. So to summarize the solution to this problem, the ball is deflating at a rate of 28.56 seconds, 0.567 inches squared per second at the moment in question. So take a minute, look over those work, those steps, and then go ahead and go on to number four. Number four, a cone-shaped paper cup is being filled at a water cooler. The procrastinator filling the cup wants to make this break as long as possible. So he's filling the cup slowly at a constant 0 0.01 cubic inches per second. The radius of the cuff is roughly equal to a third of the cup's height. At what rate is the height of the water of the cup changing when h equals two inches? So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my picture, identify my known information and what the problem is specifically asking me for. So we have our cone, dv dt is 0 0.01, the radius is one third of the height, and at the moment that we're considering, h is two inches, and we want to find dh dt. So we're talking about filling up a cone, which means the formula that comes to my mind is the volume of a cone. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in and then add the indicated information that I just identified on the right hand side. So we know that volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. We also know that this problem tells us that the radius is one third of the height. So if I square that, I get one ninth h squared. Then if I combine that with what's already there, I get that the volume is pi over 27 times h to the third. Now I'm going to differentiate this with respect to t. That's going to give us dv dt equals pi over 9 times h squared, since the 3 from the h to the third would drop down and simplify with 27. So pi over 9 h squared dh dt. Now let's fill in what we know at, is happening at this moment. So we know that dv dt at this moment is 0 0.01. h at this moment is 2 and dh dt is what we're trying to find. Now we can simply solve for dh dt, which is going to give us 0 0.0716 inches per second. So to answer this question, the rate of change of the height of water at this moment is 0 0.0716 inches per second. So go ahead and read through number five, pause the video, see if you can work through the solution to number five and then check afterwards. Number five, let's say an isosceles triangle shaped sail with a mast down the center hoists in such a way that the base of the sail is eight feet long and the tip of the sail climbs up the mast while maintaining an isosceles triangle. The two states of the sail are shown below. <laughs> I also have no idea really how this works, but in terms of sailing. So a couple of things, I'm gonna just add to the picture. This length is eight. This is an isosceles triangle, which means each side is four. It also means that these two sides are the same length. This is still true over here. This is eight, these are still four. And I'm just gonna call, so A says when the area of the sail is changing at two feet squared per second, the height of the tip of the sail is three feet. What is the rate of the length of the edge of the sail changing at? Write a sentence to describe what you find. So I'm going to call this side E for edge, and I'm going to call the middle line H. So let's identify all the things that we know based on these variables that I just set up in my picture, and then what we want to know. So we know dA dt is two at this moment and that h is three. We can actually use that piece of information to find e at this moment because what we have here is a right triangle. 
So what we can say is 3 squared plus 4 squared equals e squared. So at this moment, we can also say that e is 5. So I'm going to add that to our, at the moment that we're talking about, that piece of information is probably going to come in handy. So let's try and think of a general formula that ties these variables together. And I think the one we just used is probably going to help us out here. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to say, so this was 1, we identified all of our information. Now 2, we're going to start tying that to a formula. So I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem, four squared, and I can use four because four isn't going to change because the base is not changing. So four squared plus h squared equals e squared. Now I have to keep h and e as variables because they are changing depending on the moment that we're talking about. Now, if I differentiate this with respect to t, I'm gonna get zero plus 2h dh dt equals 2e de dt. Then I can plug in everything that I know from part one where we identified everything we know. So I'm noticing a problem here. I have an equation, but now I have two different variables and I can't solve for de dt unless I figure out what dh dt is. So I need to find another way to incorporate the variables that I have to be able to solve for dh dt. So I'm gonna look through the problem and try and figure out what I haven't used yet. I haven't used this da dt piece of information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a formula that involves a and h, like the area formula, to see if that will help me find dh dt. So the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. We know that the base of this large triangle is 8. So half of 8 is 4. So we can say the area is 4h. And we can use that number because the base is not changing. Now we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to t. So that's going to give me dA dt equals 4 dH dt. But we know that dA dt is 2 which means that dh dt is gonna be 1 half. Now I can go back, so I started here with one, I moved over here to two, three, now I can go back here now that I know dh dt and I can plug that in right here for dh dt. So six times 1 half equals 10 times dh, sorry, de dt, which means that de dt, and I'm just gonna move down into this problem a little bit, de dt, is going to be 3 over 10 feet per second. Part B, at what rate is the base angle changing at the same instance? We get to use all of the information that we just found is still valid, and what we're looking for now is this theta angle at the base of the triangle. And technically, it could be on either side. This is an isosceles triangle, so both of those thetas would have the same value. So what are we looking for? We want d theta dt. So we're dealing with triangles and we want to find a way to relate the variables we know, such as height or edge or the base, in some way to do this. There's a lot of different trig functions you can use, but since I know the base is constant and I know a lot about h in this moment, I'm gonna use tangent and I'm gonna use opposite over adjacent for that. So what we can say is tangent of theta equals h over four. Now I can differentiate both sides with respect to t. That's going to give me secant squared theta, d theta dt, which is what we want, equals one-fourth dh dt. Now since this is the part of the same question, I don't have to really show my, I don't need to show my calculation for dh dt again. We already figured that out in part a. Part a says that dh dt is one-half. So let's isolate d theta dt and plug in what we know for dh dt. So I'm going to divide both sides by secant theta. I'm going to multiply 1 fourth times 1 8 1 half because dh dt is 1 half. And that's going to give me 1 over 8 secant squared theta, which is the same thing as 1 eighth cosine squared theta. But we know what cosine squared theta is. We can just use regular old right triangle trig. So I'm going to just make a note that cosine squared of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, and at that moment, adjacent over hypotenuse is 4 over 5. That means d theta dt 
is going to equal 1 8th times that squared, so 16 over 25. And then if you simplify this, you're going to get 2 over 25 radians per second. So the base angle is increasing at a rate of 2 over 25 radians per second at this moment. If you were going to write that out in a sentence, that would that's what you would say. The base angle is increasing at a rate of 2 over 25 radians per second at this moment. Let's go ahead and look at the very last question. The surface area of a sphere is increasing at a rate of 14 pi square meters per hour at a certain instant. The surface area is 36 pi square meters. What is the rate of change of the volume of the sphere at that instant? So we're going to draw a picture, identify what we know and what we want to find. So we know that dsa dt is 14 pi and at the moment that we're talking about the surface area is 36 pi. We're being asked to find dv dt. So I'm going to go ahead and use the surface area formula keeping in mind that I'm probably also going to have to find, use the volume formula a little bit later, but I'm going to go ahead and start with surface area. So I know the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. I'm starting with surface area because all of the information that I know at this instant has to do with surface area. I'm probably going to need to find out information about r because that's the overlap in formulas for volume and surface area of a sphere. I'm probably going to need to figure out what is r at this moment and what is dr dt. So let's start with surface area and see if some of those things start to come out. So there's my surface area formula. I'm going to differentiate with respect to t. That's going to give me dsa dt equals 8 pi r dr dt. We remember at this moment, we know that the surface area is 36 pi, which means that we can actually solve for r right now. So we can say that 36 pi equals 4 pi r squared. The pi's are going to go away. So r squared is 36. Nope, r squared is 9, so r is going to be 3. We probably could have done that over here, but I didn't even realize that I needed that until right now. Okay, so now let's plug in what we know for r so that we can solve for dr dt because we also know what ds dt is. So dsa dt is 14 pi equals 8 times pi times the radius 3 times dr dt. So right now we can find out that dr dt is going to be equal 7 over 12 meters per second. Now that we have this, we can go up and actually start talking about volume since our ultimate goal is to talk about dv dt. So let's start with the volume formula of a sphere. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We can differentiate this with respect to time. That's going to give us dv dt equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. At this moment, we know that r is 3 and dr dt is 7 over 12, so we can plug that information in. So dv dt is going to be 21 pi. You could multiply that out if you want to. I'm just going to leave it as 21 pi meters squared per hour. So working through a related rate problem is really a process. You start by drawing a picture, identifying what you know, what you're being asked for, figuring out which equations you can use, implicitly differentiating them with respect to t, and then substituting in what we know is happening at that moment that we're solving for and finding the variable or the rate of change that we need. So this is something that you're going to need to practice more in order to get better at it. So make sure you're doing the problems on the homework, find some extra practice problems online. You'll see some on the review that involves 2.4 and make sure to ask questions in class. Thanks for listening.